to be very frank with you, between now and March 1st, so for another two weeks, if I didn't lose a pound, if I didn't lose half a pound, I wouldn't care. <laughs> Look who decided to show up for dinner. Welcome to the Johnny Bag of Donuts Kitchen of Gains. Cooking some pasta right now. Rico's behind the camera. And I want to welcome you to my kitchen. I'm gonna go to my serious voice now. Rico's behind the camera. I want to thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Especially if you've been following along for the past few videos in the 90 Day Fat Loss Challenge. This is the wrap up for the first day one through day 10. Basically, the theme of this wrap up is my weight how my weight fluctuated, where it started, where it went throughout the first 10 days, um, if I was frustrated with it, if I got upset about it. And Rico is gonna lead the discussion. He's gonna ask me questions based around what he saw, what he wants to know, and hopefully you'll relate to it. It'll answer your questions about what I did for the first 10 days. And now I'm going to shut up because I keep rambling in all these videos and Rico is gonna ask me some questions. Well, I eat my pasta. What was your starting weight at? And where are you at today, this morning, what'd you weigh in at? Okay, so before I answer that, I don't know if where the camera's centered right now, but you might be asking, why is he holding a bowl up to the this thing? My kitchen terminology is not very good. I don't have a strainer. What I do is I take a bowl and I hold it against it so the water pours out, but the pasta doesn't pour out. Then when it's dry, I can pour the pasta in the bowl. Just letting you know what I'm doing with that in case uh, anybody's wondering. Uh, what was the question? I didn't listen. Starting weight, I was, um, let me check the app. You can post this up. Starting weight was 147, 147 pounds. That was 11 weigh-ins ago. So this is really the first day one through 11. I was 147. That was actually the first two weights. I was 147. And then today, I weighed in at, I weighed in at 145.6, 11 days in. Next question. Got another brain buster. <laughs> Name that movie. So between days, what happened to your weight how did that change? My weight didn't fluctuate that much until the last two days. Actually, I don't know if you saw, if you follow me on Instagram, Rico can put my Instagram handle here. Um, I put up a story earlier today about how over the years, tracking literally thousands of people's weights over a long period of time, I've found three really common fluctuation patterns. Patterns that by and large, most people fall into when they're trying to lose weight. I'm gonna do a separate video on that, showing you exactly how people fluctuate, the three different most common patterns that I have seen, so that you can sort of look at your pattern and understand like if, which one it's following so you don't get discouraged if the weight doesn't go down like you'd want it to. If you don't subscribe to the channel, make sure you do and turn the bell on so you get notified when that video comes out later this week. What you'll notice if you look at my graph and my numbers from the past 10, 11 days, it started out relatively even. So went 147, 147, then went up to 147.4, 147.4, went down to 147.2. So that's within the first five days. Actually, not only did it not go down, it went up. So 147, 147, then went 147.4, 147.4, 147.2. And I wanna emphasize that because a lot of people, when they start eating in a calorie deficit and they start really paying attention to their nutrition and they start exercising, they just expect immediate like fat loss or immediate like scale going down. Personally, I've been through this enough to know what my, how my body reacts and I know this is a really common pattern. So I'm not expecting the scale to go down immediately. I also know, and we can discuss training later, when I got really back into training, I knew my body was holding onto water. I knew the scale wasn't gonna react the way that a lot of people would expect it to. The first five days was one between 140 147, 147.4, and 147.2. Then I had my first dip on day six, which was 146.4. That was the first day, literally almost a week in, that I saw like a downward trend. Coincidentally, or not coincidentally actually, it came after my first rest day, where I did literally nothing. Like, and the workouts up to that point, they weren't all really hard, really heavy, but I was in the gym, I was doing stuff, whether it was arms or shoulders or deadlifts or whatever. I was working out. So after my first rest day, saw that dip, which makes sense because my muscles sort of released all the extra water, the glycogen, nutrients it was holding, weighed less. Next day, day seven, went back up to 147. That was my starting weight. And I wanna emphasize this because the whole first week, I went from 147 
to 147. Like that's where I ended on day seven. And so, so talk about that. Like when people, when, when that happens to someone, it's like after a week, you know, you have little spikes, you drop a little bit and then you go back up a bit. It's like, there's almost this notion of it's like, I didn't make any damn progress in a week. And it's like, how do you get over that hurdle to want to continue to the next week? That becomes an issue when people measure their progress day to day. When they look at the scale and they're like, okay, day one I weighed this, so day two I should be lower. And day two I weighed this, so day three I should be lower. And day three I weighed this, so day four I should be lower. Over time, I've understood that the first month of progress is just data collection. All of these data points do not mean anything yet because I don't measure day to day. I don't measure week to week. I don't measure two, like every two weeks. I measure month to month. The weight that I took today on February 18th, I will measure against March 18th. And the weight I take on March 18th, I will measure against April 18th. And this way you can see the trend over time. It's not the individual data points that matter. It's that larger trend. So for me, I'm literally only 11 days in right now my data points still don't matter. And it's a really important concept to understand. You're just collecting data. A lot of people look at each weigh-in as a pass or fail, as a like, this is a good or bad thing. If my weight went up, it's bad. If it went down, it's good. And that's not what it is. It's just data, that's all it is. And the more you can really get that in your head and internalize it, the less emotion you have with the skill and the more you treat it just like, here's more information. So there's a data point that you hit your highest weigh-in in the, past, like in the past 10 days, remember? Two days ago, yeah. my highest weight. So how did you, did you, some people would view that as like, I, well, I failed, I gained more weight, you know? Like mm -hmm. how, how did you view that? How did you take that? If you look at the graph, my highest weight came 10 days in. It was 148.2 and I started at 147. Literally, I was at 147, I dipped down to 146.4 on day six and then sort of hovered around 147, 147.2, 146.8, and then boom, 148.2. And realistically, that was actually a late weigh in. I think it would have been more. I think it would have been closer to 149. That did not bother me at all. And I think a lot of people might, well, how did that not bother you? Like, you went up in like two pounds on the scale, the highest you've been in 10 days. It didn't bother me, number one, because if you'd seen my Instagram story the night before, I ate a lot of pasta, I ate a lot of carbs, ate a whole pint of sorbet, and it was all accounted for. It was all like part of the plan, but I knew eating later at night, a lot of carbs, having had a big workout, I was gonna weigh more than that the next morning. I just knew it. It was like, this is what happens. It's logical, it's not emotional, right? And so when I see that weight, I'm like, cool. Another data point. And then I even wrote on my Instagram story, I was like, look, I bet tomorrow I'm gonna weigh 146.8 or less. Let's see what happens. And then I actually ended up weighing my all-time lowest, which was today at 145.6. I ended up going over a pound less than I thought. And yesterday I was just peeing the whole day because it was flushing out all that water. It just goes to show you that all these, these data points, each individual one compared to the last one does nothing for you. Your body goes through so many changes in a day and over the course of a week, it's not comparing the same thing. That's why having that monthly perspective and understanding that first month of data doesn't matter, just use it as comparison for the following month, that's what really matters. What do you predict that after one month you'll be at weight loss wise? If everything goes perfectly, we'll call it perfectly in quotes because nothing is perfect, um, I would say at the end of the month, 145, anywhere between 140, 144 to 145, I'd be good with. I don't want to go too much faster than that. A lot of people want to see like really fast progress, like really fast weight loss, especially when you're already relatively lean. Faster weight loss is much more likely to result in muscle loss too. I don't want to go super fast from a weight loss perspective. I'm just looking at, I know half a pound to one pound a week is very good. Like that's perfect, half a pound to one pound. My main goal is I just want to get stronger and look better and feel better. The scale weight doesn't mean much. If I don't lose weight, but I feel better and my pictures improve and my strength is going up, that's a win. Like the scale is just the fucking number. It really doesn't matter. From a, a data perspective and based on my experience, I would say between 144 to 145 is a really good range to fall in. To be very frank with you, between now and March 1st, so for another two weeks, if I didn't lose a pound, if I didn't lose half a pound, I wouldn't care as long as I can visibly see improvements as long as my strength is going up. That's all I really care about. Some people that would frustrate the heck out of them. Right. 
Why doesn't that frustrate you? It's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Think about this. Let's say I stay at 145.6 for the rest of the month, two more weeks. I started at 147.0. That's about a pound and a half less than my starting point. And if I lose half a pound a week over the course of four weeks, that's two pounds. So one and a half pounds over the course of a month, very sustainable, feel really good. A lot of people are like, well, that's not good enough. Like that's not average. Who f cares? Progress is progress, number one. And I'd way rather do something a little bit slower that I can enjoy, eat f***ing pasta and be fine with it, then go too fast, have really fast progress, but not be able to maintain it, not enjoy it. Even if I stay exactly where I am until the end of the month for two more weeks, I don't care. Because as long as I'm feeling good, as long as my strength is improving, and as long as I'm looking in the mirror and I'm liking it, that's all I care about. People attach too much to that number and not enough to what's actually going on with their body, with their mind, with their performance, everything. If that number takes control of people and it's easy to, to blame the number, to blame the scale, it's like the scale's fault. It's not the scale's fault. You have to take ownership. It's how you're looking at the scale, right? It's like, it's not the scale's fault. It's how you're viewing it. And it's, it's if you're expecting these unrealistic, this unrealistic amount of progress, this faster progress, that's your fault because you're putting that on yourself. So you have to be an adult and call yourself on your bullshit. Stop being such an asshole to yourself. Say, hey, if I lose half a pound this whole month, still half a pound less, right? Progress is progress. Stop being an asshole to yourself. Was there any days that you wanted to say fuck it, like nutrition wise, or maybe even like not want to go to the gym at all? There were zero days I didn't want to go to the gym. Actually, that's a lie. Today, I didn't want to go to the gym, today. Super tired, didn't really get any sleep last night. But at the end, really happy I went. I didn't want to go, but I'm really glad I went. Good workout too. There was one night, I forget what night it was, I got these. In the video, I basically said that, got wicked hungry out of nowhere. It's a little after 10 o'clock, like 10, 15 p.m. I was like, fuck it, I have extra calories to spare. I'm not gonna just be super hungry right now. So I went out, I got, went back to my roots, some barbecue sunflower seeds. They're actually like super good salty crunchy and very low calories for this massive bag for the entire bag it's under 400 calories i wanted pizza I walked by like 17 pizza shops on the way to uh the cvs to get that but didn't get it had these by getting these rather than going off track i felt better about myself i like took care of that craving that i wanted and i stayed on track i think a lot of people they lose it when they're just like i want it i want it i want it i want it and a lot of times especially right now, they'll use flexible dieting as an excuse to be like, well, I'm a flexible dieter. I don't wanna to be too strict. And then they'll go and they'll have a ton. Oftentimes they binge and then they regret it. That's not flexible dieting. Flexible dieting is being able to stay within your goals, stay with, like help you achieve your goals. And if you end up going off track, not feeling guilty about it. That's it. It's just being able to indulge in your favorite foods without feeling guilty and without having a binge. That's it. It doesn't mean that you can't have strict guidelines and follow them and be like on point with them. Well, you sent me that video last night that like you find yourself mindlessly stacking. You're like, I gotta get up and like I need to go for a walk. I'm in my apartment, not right now, but a, a couple minutes ago, I was in my apartment doing work and started to notice myself just picking at food and eating it. Not because I'm hungry, because I was bored. So I just went on a walk taking a quick 10, 15 minute walk around my neighborhood. You start boredom eating if you're not even hungry and you notice yourself eating, stop. That's one of my favorite things to do. If I ever feel like myself about to do something emotional, whether it's boredom eating or just like eating something out of like for no other reason than just because it's there, get out, go on a walk, like to do something, do 50 push-ups, do 100 jumping jacks, something, get your mind off it. It's almost like, the cravings are a big wave, like a really big fucking tsunami that are gonna hit you. And like, as it's getting closer, 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 it's, you're like more likely to go get it. But if you can just like walk away from the wave and just like avoid it, once it crashes, it's gone. The hard part is just walking away. Get, get, get out of that emotional state for a second, just avoid it. And then once it's gone, it's gone. That's why I like that, just wait 20 minutes. Just like, wait, go on a walk, go do something. If you still want it, great. But if after 20 minutes, you don't want it, cool. Gearing more towards like training-wise, like how, how's that been? 
Honestly, I'm super happy with the training. Feel really good. Muscle memory is amazing. Like it comes back fast. It really does. The first few training sessions, 315, like it came up fast for one. 335 came up pretty fast for one, but now I'm doing 335 for five. That looks even faster. And like, it's only a couple weeks, right? It's like, I feel strong, feel good. The first week or two back, I was not feeling strong. I was not anywhere near my strongest at all. I'm still not, but it didn't feel that good. And I think a lot of people that go on vacation for a week, or like they'll get sick. They're like, oh my God, I haven't been in the gym for two weeks. What do I do now? <laughs> you go back. <laughs> yeah. Like people are like, oh my God, I went on vacation for a week. How do I go back? What do I do? It's like, you f***ing walk right in the door and you get going again. Don't expect it to be the best workout of your life. Don't expect it to be like a world record workout. Don't expect it to be the strongest you've ever been, but you go back. And within a week, two weeks, three weeks, you'll be back. You'll be fine. Don't be an asshole to yourself and don't expect every workout to be the best workout of your life. One of my favorite rules of thumb for, for the gym is a rule of five. Out of every five workouts, you're gonna have one workout that was absolutely amazing. You're gonna have one workout that was absolute dog shit. And you're gonna have three workouts that are ho-hum, not great, not terrible, but you got them in. It's not universally true, but it is like, if you like track your workouts on that data perspective and like write like, Great workout, ho-hum workout, bad, like you'll find that you'll have that rule of five in there pretty consistently. And the sooner you can get in that, get in your mind and internalize here and here, every workout's not gonna be your best and you can't expect it to be. In the same way that not every day is gonna be your best nutritionally. It's not the amazing days that make your progress, it's the general everyday ho-hum. Just doing it, just getting it in. Maybe it wasn't perfect, but it also wasn't the complete opposite. And those general ho-hum days, that you can just stay consistent, even if you don't feel like it, that's when the magic happens. As these weeks progress now, like with this next week coming up, do you think your hunger is gonna be a little bit worse? This week, my hunger was minimal. As I get leaner, as I get more into a deficit, my hunger is gonna go up. I know it for a fact. As that happens, you're gonna see my refrigerator getting more and more prepared. Right now, there's not much in there. What is there in there? What do we got? We got Greek yogurt, almond milk, water, seltzer, I had pasta, we got oatmeal there. I did have some strawberries in there. I had some more Greek yogurt. I also do have these, these are amazing. They're essentially like vegan ramen is probably really the best way to put it. It's like they make it look really healthy because it's vegan and it's in a green container. They got the whole health halo. The ingredients are great. I really like them, they're super tasty. They're very low calorie, anywhere between 210 calories to 140 calories depending on the one. These are great. All I do is boil water, put it in, and it's very low calorie. What you'll see is as my hunger increases and as I get leaner, I'm gonna have to be more prepared and stock myself with more fruits, more vegetables, more things ready to eat, ready to drink. It sounds so cliche and almost the point of being obnoxious, I don't wanna say it, but it's true. If you're not prepared and ready, that's when you go off track. That's when you just go to the pizza shop. That's when you like go to the grocery store and get way too much. That's when you just get the easy thing instead of preparing yourself. <clears throat> I mean, it's actually really interesting. I'm very interested, interested to track my spending over the next couple months. I eat out all the time, constantly. And that's what I've done is because it's faster, it's easier. I don't have to prepare it. Now that I'm doing this, I'm going back more towards preparing my own food. When you prepare your own food, it is way lower calorie and it's so much easier to track. That's number one. Number two is, it's way less expensive, especially in New York. So that'll be interesting to see as I get leaner, my savings will go up, right? So it'll be an interesting thing to track. But yeah, my hunger is 100% gonna increase. And over time, I would expect that I'll get more tired. I would expect that I won't have as much motivation to go to the gym, in which case I might reevaluate my training program. It might reevaluate what I'm doing and, and all of that. But for right now, I'm in the gym four to six times a week, going by how I feel, I'm not trying to go for world record workouts, just getting it in, feeling strong. If I feel good, I'll go harder. If I don't feel good, I'll take it easier. Like today, today was a pretty light day. It, was, it wasn't like that difficult, but I got it in. And that's what's most important. Before we wrap up, I wanna say thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me in this, for encouraging me. It really, it helps a lot. It really does to get the encouraging messages, to see the comments, it means a lot. Comment below if you're joining me. If you're also doing this 90 day challenge, if you're taking part in it, comment below, let me know. Hashtag, just another muggle. Speaking of which, thank you to everybody who is tagging me and hashtagging just another muggle on the Instagram stories sharing them every day. I love them. The messages I get in response to people who are like, oh my God, like it's so, it's so like amazing to see these weights because I usually struggle with the fluctuations, but to see everybody is, it makes it more 
um, understandable that it's just a number and it's not really like fat gain like all that time. So thank you for taking part and helping improve other people's relationship with the scale. If you found this helpful, if you like this dialogue between Rico and I and the questions, let us know in the comments that you'd like to see this again for the next wrap up. If you'd like to see something different, let us know what that might be. We just wanna make sure we give you the best value, give you the best insight into this process. And also, if you don't subscribe already, make sure you subscribe so that you can be notified when the next video goes out, which is going to be in the next one to three days, the um, scale video showing you the three most common scale fluctuations so you can understand which one you fall into and know that you're not gaining fat. It's just a really common fluctuation pattern. So thank you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. I will talk to you.